Hi, and welcome to this base version of the GT10 tutorial DVD. With me I have Jason, who I've been performing with professionally for over 10 years. Now, essentially, uh, this tutorial DVD will feature the guitar version of the GT10. Um, where it pertains particularly to the bass, we'll be featuring the GT10B. So, um, let's get a start and have a look at the output selections on the GT10B. Output select. Okay, so there's three different output selections available within the GT10B. The first output is the amp with tweeter. Now this is an optimized output for use with a bass amp with the speaker box with a tweeter. The second one we have is amp with no tweeter. Again, same thing used with a bass amp but with a speaker box without a tweeter. It has a slight presence boost to cater for the fact your speaker box has no tweeter. The third one is the line phones. Now this is an uncolored output, perfect for use for recording um, as the output has no coloration whatsoever. Okay, so you actually use your bass rig live, but uh, I notice you use the line phones uh, settings, so... I do, I use the line phone settings because I like the idea that the sound isn't being coloured. Um, so I can hear, I like the sound of my bass and that's what I like to hear, an uncoloured sound of my bass coming through my amp. So I guess um, the, the lesson here is that, you know, try the different settings because just because you might be using a bass rig doesn't mean that those output settings are going to work for you. So go through the different output selections and, and just see which one actually gives you the cleaner sound or the sound that you want. You know, if you want the coloration uh, of the amp output selections, then, then use those. But um, try them all and see which one works best for you. So aside from the three different output selections within the GT10B, uh, you've got two different modes that you can utilize. You've got system and patch. Now, the differences here is if you're using the, the system mode, that's global. That means that, the, for instance, if you're using the line phone selection, uh, every single patch will use that same selection. Whereas if you're using the patch mode, you can define on a patch level uh, which output selection you want to use. Keep it in mind that when set to patch, every patch within the system has to have the output select saved within it. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at doing that. So for instance, we've got uh, the, the mode set to patch now. So if we just exit out of there, uh, we're in patch uh, one, bank one, and um, you can see that we've got the output selection set to line phones. Now, if we exit there and go to patch two within that bank and hit the output selection, you can see that the amp with no tweeter has been saved within that output selection. So if I want to change that to, for instance, the uh, selection amp with tweeter, I just simply use the value wheel to, to change it, but then I have to press the right button twice to actually save it within that patch. Now, if we just go back to patch one, you can see we're still set to line phones. I'll just exit and go to patch two and hit output selection, and there you go. So don't forget, if you're using the patch setting, make sure you write the patch uh, to save uh, the output selection with the, the actual patch itself. System menu. The system menu contains parameters that are considered global. This means that they affect the GT10 as a whole. Enter the menu by pushing the system button and scroll through the menu items by either rotating the value dial or pressing the right or left cursor buttons. Let's have a look at the individual menu items. Patch search and saving. The patch search feature can be a time saver when you start building your own patches. You can save patches to one of 10 user categories so that finding a specific patch is easy. There are a couple of ways to save or write a patch and anytime you make a change to a patch, you need to write the patch, otherwise your changes will be lost when you change patches. If you're editing a patch and just want to quickly commit to your changes, you can simply press the write button twice. Alternatively, if you want to save the patch to a different location, you can press the write button once and then rotate the dial to select the location where you want to save it. Just bear in mind that this will overwrite whatever patch is currently in that location. At this point, if you want to give your patch a new name, you can press the display mode button to do this and use the value wheel to dial up the first character in your new name and then press the right cursor button to continue with the next character. 
you can go back by hitting the left cursor button, insert a space by pressing the up cursor button, and delete a character or space by hitting the down cursor. When you're done, select a category by turning the fourth parameter knob and press right. Before you press right a second time, you can opt to save your preset to a different location by rotating the value dial. If you just want to save the preset to the same location, just press right again. Now let's have a look at renaming our categories. By default, there are 10 user categories named user1, user2, and so on, but you can give them your own custom names. Press the system button and then scroll to the category name menu. Press enter. You can see that I've already created some here. I've named user1 dirty for my distorted patches, user2 for my clean patches, and user3 for synth type patches. Let's rename user4 to cool effects. First, rotate the parameter 4 knob to bring the screen to the category 4 name, which is currently named user4. Now you can go ahead and enter your name using the same method as I described earlier. Then you can exit that menu and go back into the patch search page where you will see your new category. So now, as you go along creating presets, you can write them to specific categories if you wish so that searching through them is a little easier. Just a couple of other save options that are useful is the patch exchange, initialize, and system preamp write functions. From any patch, press write once and then press the right cursor button to access the alternative write functions. The first one allows you to simply switch the locations of two patches rather than overwriting anything. Just use the dial to select the patch you want to switch with. The patch initialize function basically wipes the whole patch to give you a blank canvas to start with. And lastly, the system preamp write function allows you to save the preamp settings from a patch to one of three presets so that it can be applied to the whole system from within the play option menu. Tuner. Okay, so let's look at tuning your bass with the GT10. Just press the uh, tuner button to engage the menu and you'll notice there's a couple of different settings here that you can change. First of all, you've got the, uh, the pitch. Now, uh, most occasions you'll leave this set to 440 hertz, which is concert pitch. Uh, the rare occasions where you may need to change it is if, uh, say you're recording with a piano that might be sl uh, slightly out of tune, you can alter the tuning frequency in accordance with the piano. Um, so, uh, you know, in the 25 years that I've been performing live, I've never had to change a tuning frequency. So I doubt that you will probably need to change it either. So keep it set to 440 hertz. Now, the output mode is quite uh, handy if you're performing live. When it's set to mute, every time you engage the tuner, you'll have no output uh, out of your bass rig whatsoever. So you can tune silently on stage. However, if you set the mode to bypass, you can get the best of both worlds. You can um, use the expression pedal within the GT10 to give you either a totally muted signal or as you push down on the uh, the pedal, you can increase some levels. So I'll just get Jason to uh, quickly just give me a, an idea of that. So it's in the totally heel down position at the moment. No output as I push it forward. You get level. So. So basically, um, you know, if you wanted to hear what you were tuning, if you're doing sound check and you've got it set to uh, bypass, you can tune up a sound check and hear what you're, you're tuning to. Uh, when you actually come to playing live, you can just ensure that your heel is down and you can tune silently. Okay, so what we might do is just quickly go through and um, just tune a few of the strings and I'll just explain what's going on on the display here. So as you strike a note, uh, the note will be re represented on the screen. Basically, when the arrows are blackened out on the right-hand side of the display, that means your, your note is sharp. When it's uh, black below, uh, sorry, to the left-hand side of the note, uh, it's actually flat. So basically what you want to do is uh, have both arrows, either side of the, the note, um, basically blacked out so that uh, you know you're in tune. So what note do you got there, Jace? G, or okay. F sharp apparently. Uh, F sharp, okay. So um, obviously you need to know the notes on your bass uh, to get this right, but as Jason tunes up his G note, C is flat. And there you go, in tune. So pretty easy uh, uh, display and it, um, it's very easy to see when you're performing live on stage as well. 
input output. This menu has several pages that allow you to customize signal behavior from your guitar. Page 1 allows you to set up input level and presence. As the name suggests, this governs the volume of your actual guitar when it hits the input of the GT10. For example, if your guitar has high output active pickups, you may get unwanted distortion before you even begin. So this function lets you turn down the guitar's input. If you find your guitar to be particularly dull or bright, you can shape it with the presence knob. Change both of these values with the corresponding knobs underneath the screen. You can actually set these functions for up to three different guitars. For example, let's say you use two different guitars live. One has regular passive pickups, the other high output active pickups. You may need to set up two different input levels so that when switching guitars, your patches behave similarly in terms of volume and presence. Doing this helps avoid having to build different patches to suit different guitars. Now, if you press the right parameter button, you'll come to the global EQ. If you play live regularly, you'll know that every venue sounds different. The global EQ affects every patch in the GT10 as a whole and is geared towards tailoring your sound to a particular environment. If you are not very familiar with how EQ works, refer to the chapter about EQ for a better understanding. Page 3 in the input output menu contains other global levels that you may find useful. Again, these settings affect the GT10 as a whole. The noise suppressor threshold is set to 0 dB by default, but occasionally you may connect a guitar that is possibly too noisy or the signal too weak. So the global threshold will allow you to adjust this without having to change every single patch. The reverb level allows you to change the output of the reverb globally. Let's presume you have created all of your patches in your bedroom or home studio where the reverbs are being absorbed by the surrounding environment, like carpet and window dressings. Then you have to play a gig in a huge hall or church that has a lot of natural reverb that will make your patches too wet or over-accentuate them. You can turn the reverb down to suit this situation, again with a single setting that affects all of your patches equally. The output level knob on the front of the GT10 will not affect volume coming from the digital output. So you use the USB digital output setting in the input output menu to adjust it. This is very handy if you are recording and are running your main outputs to a separate output for monitoring. You can set the correct digital level going to the recording console, but at the same time use the output level knob to set your monitor level. Master output level allows you to set the GT10 to either line level or mic level. If you are playing live and connected directly to the mixing console, set it to plus 4 dB, whereas minus 10 dB will suit most amplifiers. Okay, so within the input output menu on the GT10B, uh, you've got page 4, which uh, gives you a couple of different settings for the sub output. Uh, we've got two modes here you've got left and right, and you've got the effect direct. So, um, Jace, just talk us through what we've got going on here. Okay, the left and right setting is if you are running stereo effects and a stereo system, you need to have that set to left and right in order to have the stereo effect. Uh, so does that mean you need two channels on the mixing desk? You need two channels on the mixing desk, one set up on the left and one set up to the right. So your sound guy is going to be really happy about that. Okay, and then we've got the uh, effect direct. Now the effect direct has the left side uh, output as a mono output. So all your effects and patches you have set up will um, directly come out of the left side as a mono. The direct um, is the right side where that will give an unaffected sound of your bass come out. So if you're recording and you want to have a separate channel with just a dry signal, you'd run it out of the direct, the right side, and you'd run the wet signal with all your effects on it out of the left side. And then your sound engineer can mix the two sounds together if you like. If you just want to run mono, you just run straight out of the left side and that has all your effects and patches set up as you have set them up. That's a pretty handy function. So, all right, so um, that's the sub output on the GT10B. Patch edit. The patch edit menu is basically another way in to edit specific effects within a patch. Alternatively, just press any effects button to enter its respective menu. Effects blocks that are lit represent those that are currently on within the patch. If you press a button that is not lit, press it a second time to turn the effects on. Once inside the effects menu, you will notice that there are generally four parameters shown at any given time. These correspond directly to the four parameter knobs beneath the screen. 
and turning one instantly jumps to its setting. From within an effects menu, pressing the display mode button toggles between the graphical display mode and the text mode. Press the exit button to leave a menu or simply press another effects block to instantly jump into its menu. Manual settings. Manual mode allows you to use the GT10 as you would a series of individual stomp boxes. This page allows you to change which effects blocks are assigned to the four patch pedals and the two bank pedals. To customize your pedals, simply use the cursor buttons to select the block you want to change and use the dial to change it. To engage manual mode, press the display mode button until it is displayed on the screen. Play option. This page contains various parameters that affect switching of patches. Preamp mode allows you to set up global preamps. For example, patch allows you to edit and use a different preamp for every single patch, but let's presume you want to use the same preamp for every patch. Well, you can set three different global preamps up and then specify which one you want to use by spinning the dial. This can be handy if you have multiple amplifiers where you want to use the preamp section of each amp. You would set a global preamp to suit each individual amp that you own and then just change to each one accordingly. Patch change mode allows you to specify whether delay or reverb repeats will spill over from one patch to another when you change. Fast turns the spillover off but allows for the quickest change time between patches. The smooth option is not as quick but allows for more natural sounding switching if certain conditions are met. For example, if you are soloing and then switch to a different patch, the delay and reverb from your solo will carry over to the new patch provided you have the same delay and reverb types in both patches. Here's an example of where I am changing from a solo patch to a clean patch. Hear how the delay carries over. But if I change the delay and reverb to a different type, it doesn't. If you want your effects to spill over, meeting these conditions is critical but not always possible depending on how you design your patches. Bank change mode sets the switching behavior when changing banks. I personally have it set to wait, which allows me to specify which patch within that bank I want to go to. If you have it set to immediately, it will change to the next bank straight away and it will change to the same number that you are on in the current patch. So for example, I'm on patch one, bank one now. So when I hit the bank up pedal, it will take me straight to patch one within that bank. Bank extent allows you to limit a range of banks that can be called up. A great example of where this may come in handy is let's say you have three banks of patches that you use for a performance. You can define these settings so that banking up or down will only toggle through those three banks rather than the entire hundred banks that are contained in the GT10. If you want parameter values to always reflect the written state when switching patches, turn this function off. If turned on, the patch you switch to will take on the expression values of parameters from the previous patch. For example, if the volume pedal's position is at 85 from the first patch, it will remain at 85 when you switch until you physically change it. I personally like to always switch to patches that reflect the saved values within that patch, so I make sure this function is set to off. Pedal indicators will cause the LEDs to flash on patches that are not currently selected so that you can see them at a glance. You may find this function useful if you play in venues where the stage is dimly lit. Okay, so within the play option menu, you've got a function called the number pedal switch. This gives you one of three different options here and uh, it works when you press the currently selected uh, patch button. So basically, uh, in this case, we've got it set to off. That means if I press the currently selected patch button again, or, or pedal, uh, nothing will happen. However, I can change it to tuner, for instance. Now, what happens here is when we're playing, uh, if I press the currently selected patch pedal a second time, you'll see that it engages the tuner. Uh, this is particularly handy so that you don't have to be bending down on stage and pressing the tuner button. It's all uh, right at your feet, and pressing it a second time will get you back to the patch. So 
you know, it's a really handy function. It works essentially like another assign, except you're limited with your options. So the second option is, if we go back into the play option menu, uh, you can set this to channel AB. Now, on the guitar GT10, uh, this basically works by toggling between channel A and B of the preamp. However, it works in a slightly different manner with the bass GT10. Um, basically, you've got your two different sides of the effects chain. So channel A is the left side and channel B is the right side. So you can set this function to toggle between your two different sides of the effects chain. Um, so you can set up two totally different um, sounds effectively within one patch and use the currently selected patch pedal to toggle between the two channels. Dial function allows you to specify whether the dial will change only parameter values or be used for patch selection and parameter values. One situation where you would set it to only parameters is if when you play live and you have trouble with guitar cables dragging across the GT10, which may inadvertently change patches. Control. The GT10 has numerous display modes that can be cycled through using the display mode button, and you can set it to suit your own personal preference. I personally like the patch name with knob function page that allows me instant access to four separate parameters via the respective knobs. You can customize which parameters these knobs affect in page one of this menu. I like to have them set to master EQ and patch level so that I can change them on the fly when playing live, but by using the value dial you can change them to whatever you like from an extensive range of options. Pages 2 through 8 within this menu allow you to customize whether the real-time controllers, which include the onboard control and expression pedals, as well as your external subcontrollers, work at a patch level or globally. If they are set to patch, then the individual pedal functions are edited within each patch's assign menu, whereas setting it to system lets you define a single function that affects all patches. As an example, if I go to page 5 and set the control 1 preference to system and then make the function channel AB, it will allow me to change preamp channels in every patch without having to make an individual assignment to each one, because it is global. LCD. This menu allows you to adjust the liquid crystal display contrast. It ranges from 1 being the lightest to 16 being the darkest. Pedal calibration. So that the internal expression pedal accurately reflects its full range of motion, it is a good idea to occasionally calibrate the pedal. Press enter and follow the on-screen prompts. You will first need to set the minimum pedal position. This is the fully back heel down position. When you've done this, press enter and set the fully toe down position. This is the maximum pedal position. Then press enter. The pedal switch threshold page allows you to set the pressure in which the expression switch engages. If you find that the expression switch engages too easily when using the expression pedal, you can increase the threshold so that it will take more toe pressure to turn it on. Mine is set at 6. I should point out that there is no pedal calibration available for sub-control pedals. Factory reset. This menu allows you to return the settings of the GT10 to its original factory state. You can specify whether you want to reinstate the entire GT10, the quick presets, system settings, or within a range of banks. For example, if you just want to reinstate the patches but leave the system settings intact, you would set the lowest bank for the left value to the highest bank on the right value. On the other hand, if you want to include the system settings as well, set the left value to system and the right screen to its highest bank value. Setting both screens to system will reinstate only the system settings. Quick allows you to reinstate only the user quick presets that you have made. Master menu. The master menu contains preferences that are relative to the currently selected patch. Let's have a look at the individual menu items. Master. Here's where you set patch level and master EQ. As mentioned earlier, I have these settings set to the real-time parameter knobs for convenient adjustment without having to enter this menu. Master BPM and key. You can set the BPM here so that once saved, the patch will always return to your specified tempo regardless of any adjustments made via a tap tempo pedal. 
The same is true for the master key. This can be set so that the harmonist and auto riff, if used, default to that key. Panel effects menu. There are four pages in this menu that allow you to set preferences for the onboard controllers. Page one allows you to specify a single function to each one of the onboard physical controllers. They are control one, control two, expression pedal, and expression switch. This is the switch that is located underneath the toe of the expression pedal. Press down firmly to engage it. How easily it turns on or off is dependent on the threshold setting that you have made when calibrating the expression pedal. Page 2 allows you to set your WAR preferences, regardless of whether you are actually using it within that patch. Okay, so we're just uh, messing around with the WAR in the GT10B. Now, unlike the guitar GT10, uh, the base version only has five different WAR models. So um, let's have a look at the different models within this unit. So to access the different WARs within the GT10B, press the master button, use the value wheel to scroll to pedal effects, press enter, and page two is your different WARs. Now, um, you've got five different types, as I mentioned before. First one is based on a crybaby. The second one is based on a vox wah. You've got a bass wah, which is voiced specifically for a bass guitar. Uh, a rezo wah. Now this, this one actually sounds particularly good if you're using, say, a, a bass synth sound and you set your rezo wah to the end of the effects chain so that you can get you know, dance floor type sweeps. Uh, and then the last model we have here is the custom. Now, when you select custom, you'll notice that another page appears. So if I press the right parameter button there, basically you've got um, a whole range of parameters here that you can define to uh, really fine tune your, your wah sound. So you've got basically three different models that you can use as your, your base uh, wah sound. So for instance, uh, your cry baby, your vox, and your bass uh, wah. So, Pick one of them, basically then you can go through and affect uh, your Q setting. The Q setting affects how broad the frequency range is. So low, low settings narrow the frequency, high settings broaden the frequency range. Uh, and then you can define your low range, your high range. So just basically play, play around with the different parameters uh, and then, uh, yeah, customize your own, your own cool R sounds. One of the cool new additions to the GT10 is the pedal bend effect, which is totally independent of the effects one and effects two blocks. This can be used in place of the wah in any patch, and this page allows you to define the pedal bend preferences. Page four defines the feel and range of the expression pedal when used as a volume pedal. There are four different curves which adjust the taper in which the pedal reacts when moved through its range. Set the minimum and maximum settings that you want, and if you don't wish to use the volume pedal, set minimum and maximum to 100. Send and return. You might have a favorite preamp or a, a stomp box that you want to use with the GT10, and you can do that by basically routing it into the external effects loop, or the send return as it's otherwise known. We're going to have a look at patching that up in the connections uh, chapter of this DVD, but uh, let's have a look at how we uh, basically tailor whether the effects loop is on or off within a, an individual patch. Do that by pressing master and then use either the scroll wheel or the right cursor until you get to send return. Now you'll notice on the screen here it currently says send return off. Okay, At a glance we can see that the, the external loop is bypassed. It's not on currently. So let's just press the enter button to go into the menu and you can turn the loop on by pressing the master button again, okay? You can toggle this on off state just by pressing on or off. Now, if I want my external pedal to be on when you switch to a patch, you need to write its on state to the patch, okay? So, so make sure it's on and then press write twice. Now, anytime I switch to that patch, the external loop will be on. So you might have your preamp that you only want to be on within certain patches. So basically, 
only savers on state for the patches that you want it to be to be on in okay so again just go into master press enter and toggle as on off state within the master button there okay there's some other settings here there's actually three separate modes within the the effects loop which all have totally different functions which we're going to look at in a moment and you've also got a send and return level, which allow you to basically tailor the level coming from and going to your external stomp box or effect. Okay, let's have a look at the three separate modes now. Normal. This is a standard series type effects loop and works in the same way as chaining a bunch of stomp boxes together, where the effect and level of one has a direct impact on the sound and level of the next one within the chain. Direct mix. This works as a parallel effects loop. It essentially allows you to mix the signal of an external effect in with the internal chain of the GT10 without impacting on the overall level. To give you a practical example of both of these modes, I have connected an external pedal to the loop and placed it at the end of the effects chain. With the loop mode set to normal, the entire signal is passed through the external pedal. Because of this, when I turn down the external effects via the return parameter, the entire effects chain turns down. But with the loop set to direct mix, as I turn down the return level, only the effect of the external stomp box is turned down, leaving the rest of my effects chain intact. This is particularly useful because you can set different levels for your external stomp box in different patches rather than having to adjust it manually on the stomp box itself. It works really well for effects such as delay and reverb. I find it works best to turn the effect level of the stomp box to 100% and make your level adjustments within the loop. Branch out. This mode works as an auxiliary output. It will send out everything that is placed before it in the effects chain. Let's say for example that you are recording and your sound engineer wants to record only the dry unaffected preamp sound so that he can add effects later but you really need your effects on to give you the right feel for what you are performing. Well, you simply place the loop after your preamp, but before the effects, and run the send cable to the mixing console. Now, the sound guy gets his dry sound, and you can monitor with effects from the GT10. This is commonly referred to as dry tracking. You don't need to connect anything to the return jack when using this mode. Amp control. If you're using an amp that has multiple channels, the chances are your GT10 can switch channels for you. Um, it's a pretty simple control that will only toggle between two channels. So if you've got a three channel amp, for instance, it'll only toggle between two of those channels. So there will always be one channel that's redundant. The great thing with this system though is that you can program it on a patch by patch basis. So if you're toggling between a clean or a dirty channel, you can actually set this up so that it's toggling to the correct channel uh, for the patch that you've programmed. Basically, connect a cable from the amp control jack on the back of the GT10 to the channel switch jack on the back of your amplifier. Uh, now, there are two different types of cables. Uh, you may need to try either one to see which one gives you the correct switching behavior. The first one is a standard uh, tip and a ring, a standard guitar jack kind of cable. And the other one's a, a TRS or stereo type cable, which is a, a tip ring and a sleeve. Okay, so try each one and just see which one gives you the correct switching behavior. Noise suppressors. One of the great features of the GT10 is that it's got two noise suppressors. Now, uh, this is particularly handy if you're using a patch that uh, may toggle between, say, a clean and a dirty channel. Uh, clean channels inherently aren't that noisy, so uh, you're not going to need to put too much noise suppression on the clean channel, but when you switch to the dirty channel, um, depending on how much uh, gain the actual channel uses, uh, will depend how much uh, noise suppression you actually add to it. So let's, let's have a look at uh, how to set up a noise suppression uh, correctly. Uh, first of all, I've got a, a two-channel uh, preamp here. <laughs> If I switch to the dirty channel, okay. So let's uh, let's maybe have a look at let's for for the purposes of this demonstration. I'm going to go into the preamp 
and I'm just going to wind in a lot of gain just to just to almost make the noise uncontrollable. I might even go in and put some overdrive on here. Let's see, put a bit of metal zone on and this should be pretty noisy now. Okay, now if I go into the master control and then use the value dial to go to the noise suppressions, you can see I've got no noise suppression on channel one. That's the noise suppressor that I've got in the chain directly after my clean preamp. Um, the clean preamp is pretty, pretty clean. I don't actually really need any noise suppression, but if I was using, say, an overdriven sound that just had a little bit of gain, then I might just use a minimal setting of noise suppression. You can see here, if I go over to noise suppression 2 and press enter to get into that, that setting. Now, I'll just turn this almost totally off for, for the purposes of here. Now, that's pretty noisy, okay? That's much noisier than I'd be able to cope with uh, in a live situation, particularly when you turn your speaker or your amplifier up. So, we need to look at correctly setting the threshold on the noise suppression so that we're not making it uh, dynamically hard to play. If you put too much noise suppression on, uh, you're going to have to play too hard and you're going to lose the natural feel of your playing. So you need to be able to set it to the point where the noise suppression is just kicking in uh, for the noise but not actually dampening your playing. So the way I do it is just with your volume all the way up, turn it down for a sec. Uh, with the volume all the way up, we're going to turn the threshold up slowly until the noise disappears. Okay, so just lightly muting the strings and here we go. So you can see now as it gets in the 40s, it's starting to disappear. It's still there a bit. Might just Okay, so that's pretty good. That's that's set at 58 now, and that's pretty good. I should be able to play naturally. And there you go. So um, that's how to set it correctly. Now that's that's a lot of gain. I wouldn't normally use that much gain on any patch. So. Um, this is just basically over accentuating the amount of gain to, to give you an idea of how to correctly adjust it. So underneath the threshold, you've got the release. Now this, this governs how fast the noise suppression kicks in. Set to zero uh, means that it will kick in at the fastest possible rate. So as soon as it detects noise, which means as soon as that threshold is exceeded, the noise suppression kicks in to cut it out. Now, as you uh, increment up, you can set it up to 100, which is the slower. So as it hears the noise, there you can hear how slow it takes to actually cut down the noise. So yeah, this, uh, this is pretty extreme, but I mean, this, this is probably too, too long. I, I always want my gate to kick in straight away. Um, you know, leave nothing to chance. So basically I'll set mine to all the way to zero and there it'll kick straight in it's still letting my delay and reverb pass through because I've got those placed after it in the chain um, if I was to have the noise suppression after my delay and re and uh, reverb then the noise suppression will cut out the the delicate decay and repeats of my my time-based effects uh, the next setting we have is detect. Now, this tells the GT10 where to actually take the signal from. And in this case, I've, I've got it uh, taking the signal directly from the input, which means it's listening to the noise from the guitar, the cable, the preamp, etc. Uh, you can also set this to the uh, input of the noise suppressor, which for me is not working or the foot volume output, okay? Most most cases you'll use it at the input. And um, yeah, just the main thing is to be careful not to screw in too much noise suppression, otherwise you're going to lose the natural playing dynamics. 
probably one of the most frequently asked questions I get asked is where do I place certain effects within the effects chain? And, you know, generally there aren't any hard, fast rules uh, concerning where you put effects in the effects chain. It, it generally comes down to, you know, uh, the type of sound you're trying to build. And, you know, some effects sound much different um, before or after other effects. So there are a couple of guidelines that I do try to to stick to though and uh, probably my number one rule is to never put delay or reverbs before a noise suppressor and I, I kind of touched on this in the previous chapter uh, when we talked about noise suppressors you don't want uh, the subtle decay and delay repeats to be cut off prematurely by a noise suppressor so if you placed it before a noise suppressor as the threshold of the or the level of those decay repeats uh, fade out, the noise suppressor will cut them off. This doesn't sound very natural. So if you place those effects after the noise suppressor, basically it'll leave it intact and they'll, they'll decay nice, natu nicer naturally. Uh, you know, things like uh, an overdrive will generally always go before a preamp because you're driving the preamp with the overdrive, not vice versa. So always put a, an overdrive before a preamp. Um, you know, as for most other effects, it, it's really up to you where you think it sounds best. So let's look at a, a bit of a, a practical demonstration and just, just see basically how uh, certain effects can be routed and, you know, the, some of the new enhancements of the GT10's effects chain. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I've just played a basic distorted rhythm into the phrase loop of the GT10. And I'll just play that now. Now, let's have a look at uh, what we've got here. Now, this first icon represents the, the start of the effects chain, um, the guitar, basically the input of the guitar. So from there, the guitar passes through to the first effects block within the chain. Now, in this case, I've got the wah here, okay, which then in turn goes to the next effect, to the next, to the next, so on and so forth. This type of effects chain is what's known as a series effects chain. And it, it works in the same way as, a, say, a line of stomp boxes in that your guitar goes into the first one, which then goes into the next, and so on. So I've got wah flashing now. If I uh, press play and engage the wah. Okay, so that, that wah is behaving in a traditional wah type of way. So Traditionally, a wah would be placed at the start of the effects chain, but if I placed it at the end of the effects chain so that all the effects are passing through it, it has a very different sound. And I'm going to demonstrate that by just playing, and then in real time, I'll shift the wah to the end of the chain, and you'll hear the difference it has. Okay, here we go. see how it's it's almost working more like a filter so it's actually um, I guess the same same kind of concept that they use in a lot of dance music where they're using a filter to filter out uh, like a broad range of frequencies so that's because all the effects in this case are passing through the wah and then the wah is actually controlling uh, the filtering of the sound of everything whereas at the start of the chain and we'll have a listen to that again this is uh, still at the end of the chain So you can you can hear a massive difference there. Um, you know the same is true for a lot of effects, and you know uh, you may very well like the wah to filter um, like we did where it was placed at the end of the effects chain. Again, it's totally up to you. Okay, there's no right or wrong way here. So as you're programming your patches and you're placing effects, experiment with them in different parts of the chain. 
I think because you know uh, your patch can take on a very different sound dependent on where the effect is cha is um, actually placed. So let's just take this effects chain chapter just a little bit further and uh, have a look at uh, a bit more about how the parallel part of the effects chain works. And in, in this case, I've got uh, two channels set up. Here I'm using uh, preamp B, which is uh, a, a clean preamp with a compressor. I've got delay, chorus, and reverb on there. Now, if I was to press the uh, to the other channel, so I've got a dirty preamp with the Univibe on it. So let me just go into the effects uh, the effects chain itself, and let's have a look at the parallel part of the effects loop here and see what's going on. Okay, so my first preamp goes into a noise uh, suppressor and then into the effects block one. Now, uh, as I change channels, in fact, let me just step back once. As I change channels, it's going from this part of the effects chain and it's switching directly over here. Now, with previous models of the GT units, like the GT6 and the GT8, I would have to program control pedals or um, different patches to be able to change two totally independent uh, effects sounds like that. But with uh, the GT10, I simply just place them in two separate paths. So channel A, my dirty preamp, goes into the noise suppressor and then into the Univibe. <laughs> And then when I hit channel B, it's switching to this uh, channel now, and it's going to a clean uh, preamp, which goes into the noise suppressor, compressor, uh, compressor, chorus, reverb, and delay. 